Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. The rapture is coming. Are you ready? There is an event that we call the Harpazo, the catching away, the rapture, where Jesus Christ comes back to the earth, and in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we are taken up. We are caught up to be with the Lord. It's called the rapture. You have to be ready for the rapture. You can't get ready after the rapture happens. Today, for just a few minutes, I'd like to share with you a portion of the message that I preached at my church last Sunday. The title of the message is, Where Are You Headed? Where Are You Headed? The text is Mark chapter 4. Mark 4 Beginning in verse 35, we read how Jesus was preaching to the crowds along the shore. And he was preaching to the masses. And, and they were being blessed and they were being transformed and they were being built up and encouraged. When it was over, Jesus Christ looked at his disciples and he said, Let's go to the other side of the lake. Let's go to the other side of the lake. The disciples looked at one another. They agreed. They got in the boat and they, they, Jesus got in the boat with them and they all began to go across the lake to a new place, to a new destiny, a new place to minister. Something new was ahead of them. They were leaving the shore behind. And that's exactly what we need to be doing as we are getting ready for the rapture. We need to get in the boat with Jesus. We need to get born again. We need to leave the shore, leave the crowd, leave the complacency, leave the comfort that we were used to, and get in that boat and take off full speed ahead towards our destiny with God and towards the rapture. Now, as the disciples were, were in that boat with the Lord, they looked back for a few moments and they saw the shore and the crowds were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's exactly what we need to do as we're walking with the Lord. We need to forget about the past. We need to leave those things in our life that were holding us back. We need to leave the sin that, we, that so easily besets us. We need to leave that sin in our life that was secret, that we enjoyed doing, but wanting to keep it a secret. We need to leave the secret sins of the past behind, and we need to set our eyes focused on the destiny that God's called us to do. Number two, the second thing that we need to leave is our schedule. That's right, our schedule. You know, I meet a lot of people, and there are some people that are so busy, they don't have time for God. They have good jobs. They have two, three, four jobs. That's a good thing, but... Uh, too much of a good thing in this case is not that good. We have to save time for the Lord. You, 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 you are, you're spending, some people are spending too much time with their hobbies, too much time with their job, too much time with their car, too much time with who knows what is going on in their lives, but they, they, they are compressing Jesus into a few minutes on Sunday and that's it. We need to open up our schedule to allow the Lord to be part of our life every day. Amen. The third thing that we need to leave behind is that someone. There is someone in our life. There, It could be a friend. It could be a co-worker. It could be an employer. There are people that are in our life that are holding us back. They don't want us to go on with God. They want to keep us right there in the mire and in the sin and in the same situation they're in. As the old expression goes, misery loves con company. We need to leave those people behind. We need, to, we need to push those people back and say, hey, I still love you, but I'm going on with the Lord. I can't stay here with you anymore. And we need to go on and leave the, our friends or our family members or our job or our boss or, our, or, or whatever else, those people that are holding us back, we need to leave them and go on with the Lord. Now, as they were going across the, the lake, we read in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 and 36 and 37, that as they were going across the lake, all of a sudden a great storm came. This storm was bad. And it was about ready to sink the boat. And that's exactly what happens to us in our lives as we are walking with the Lord. Storms are going to come. Storms are going to come to everybody in this life. It rains on the just and on the unjust. And as these storms come, see, Satan wants to stop you 
from going on with God. And he'll try two things. He'll try either one, to turn you around. The temptation that the disciples may have had as they're going across that, that lake was, let's stop, let's turn around, and let's go back to shore. But none of them decided to do that. And that but that's exactly what Satan wants to do to people who are walking with the Lord. He wants them to stop and turn around and go back. He says, don't you remember how good things were before you got born again, before you started walking with Jesus? You should just go back to your old lifestyle and your old friends and your old habits and your old sin. Let me tell you, that's a lie of the devil. Stop thinking to yourself, and calling it the good old days. We often say the good old days. We forget that when we were living in those days, they weren't that good at all. They were the bad old days, and we were wishing we could get out of that. The second thing that Satan will try to do, if he can't turn you around, is he'll try to sink you. He tried to sink that boat that the disciples in. And as the disciples saw... <coughs> The water began to come over the side. They, they realized that they needed help, and they did the right thing. As you experience storms in your life, you don't have to try to get out of it all on your own. You don't have to try to read the latest self-help book or, or the, uh, the latest advice that somebody is giving to you. You can do what the disciples did. They went to Jesus. And in this case, Jesus was in the boat, but he was asleep. He was asleep. He was resting. He wasn't worried. He wasn't upset. He knew they were going to get to the other side because he said, let's go to the other side. They woke Jesus up and they said, we're getting ready to drown. Jesus looked around. He rebuked the wind. He spoke to the storm. And there was great calm. That's what Jesus Christ does in our life. Yeah, there'll be storms. Yeah, we will have issues to deal with. But Christ is the difference maker. He will bring calm to our lives and peace to our lives and get us to the other side. He will get us there. That's what we need to do as we prepare and as we wait for the rapture. We need to make sure that we are walking with the Lord, that Jesus is right there beside us, that we've left the past behind, that we left the old man behind. We are a new creation. We are born again. You want to be rapture ready? You want to go when the rapture happens? You must be born again. You must be born again. You must be a new creation in Christ Jesus. You may say, that sounds really difficult. No, it's not. It's very simple. A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. C, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you'd like to do that, I can pray with you right now in a very short prayer. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that you paid the penalty for my sin and that as you died on the cross, you were buried and then you arose up and now you're seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. I believe in you, Jesus Christ. And I now ask you to be my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I confess you as Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed this prayer or something similar to what I just said, you are born again. You are rapture ready. Make sure you find a Bible and you start reading it. Make sure you get into a good Bible-believing church with a pastor who preaches and teaches the Word of God. And above all, spend time every day with the Lord. And one more thing, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all your comments, all of your likes, and all your encouragement. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you.